how certain companies are controlled by certain political party. Um, now, looking at Malaysia, it's not just the economy is controlled by a certain political um, entity. Um, if you look at the judiciary, you look at the police, you look at everywhere you go, everywhere you turn, um, it's controlled by a certain political entity. Um, now, my question, my question is, um, is there any hope to it? What can we do to overcome that? Because um, where we go, this, this, these key institutions, key stores of our country is controlled by one man. And our democracy is part. So how do we go by that? a shortcut way to, to change things a long way. It's a very difficult question because we are talking about consciousness. A nation does not change in 10 years. It has to evolve. Now you want to plan to create a nation, create plan for 100 years. But at this point, things are not, things are very chaotic. Because when something is in power, put in power for many years, 20 years, 25 years, 22 years, then you have already set the stage for everything. You know, from control to authoritarianism to everything. The danger is in make, let, letting, letting uh, leaders stay in power for as long as they want in any country. Okay? Because in that way, it is difficult to, to turn back. And even if it's a process of turning back, it will become very troublesome. What is happening now in the country is that we are only hoping for things to try to undertake to change peacefully because that's what we all are about. Now we are about people of who will find peaceful ways. But when things become rough, when violence is used, when power is used, you know, unobstructively, then we are in trouble. But the best way is through education, critical consciousness because it, the most powerful change happens in the heart, right? Um, again, like I say, the process of change is very, because the word, uh, the word control and hegemony is one word, and it's introduced, introduced it to one word, hegemony. It's everything becomes common sense. When you say that, well, we can do anything, that's how things are. When you start saying that, then we all in trouble. Because from right there, from the politicians to the university leaders, to, lecture, to professors in universities, to students, to the man on the street, the woman on the street, say that not what much matter, not much you do. Then we all in trouble. And it is those people who challenge all those things that are not popular. But as a country, as a people, you must put a mirror to yourself. Because history is about no, this history is about putting a mirror to yourself and asking yourself, what are we? Where do we want to go? You know, what is best for us? So to start conversation is today. All of you are very, very good. This is a good group because when I ask, when I was asked whether I can come and talk, speak to you, I ask, I ask, uh, I told you, right, in Connecticut, are you sure you want me to you know, why do you keep on every year you know, wanting to, you know, to ask me to speak? But you know that what I'm going to be talking about and what Dr. Bakri is going to be talking about, for example. You know? But this is very good. He has to intellectualize. You have to understand. The inner, I mean, the strength in the nation is to, to be strong intellectually. You have to find the power of reason to argue things, not the fight of the brute force. Anytime we do not do anything, we don't bring the, we, we don't we don't kick people out of the university for asking questions or or you know or bring in the police force. We, we have better things to we have better ways to act, which is through engaging engagement like this. But to engage in all these things, one must prepare and equip oneself with knowledge. Doesn't matter whether you're doing biotechnology or science engineering, but love introduce yourself to everything, humanities, philosophy, sociology, read and read and read. Switch over the television, 
for once in a while and get a good book. If you're in biotechnology, ask yourself, what is biotechnology? What is the history of biotechnology? What's the future of it? And is this ethically a good path to take? Is this the road not taken? Robert Frost. Robert Frost, an English boy, American boy, he said that I, and I took the road not taken and finally said it did make a difference. You must take the road not taken. Okay? The road not taken is not the fat path like this, you see? The path in the woods, you know, the ones that are, it's always, that's creative thinking. But creativity without ethics is dangerous. You can create anything. You want to create the most sophisticated bomb? Yes, you know. It can be. You can go to uh, you know. The, you can go to church uh, or any house of worship areas uh, on Sunday and build a atomic bomb and clear your conscience. Well, I'm doing this for church is church, bomb is bomb. That is what the disjuncture is people people's mind. Oh, that's politics. You know, we are just you know making a, you know making a living. Doesn't matter whether we take in uh, 10, 20 million ringgit. Uh, just have to survive. You start thinking like that, then that's why the country is having a mass, massive heart attack. Oh, it's okay, you know, let's have an F1 formula, you know, every year. And then you start chasing my grumpy for having their own F1 formula. <laughs> you introduce excitement to youth, but yet, question? Uh, after uh, the general election of 2008, uh, like five states in Malaysia had been conquered by the uh, new government. And after that 21 months, do, do you see anything like good that had been done by that state, uh, opposed to the uh, former government? Do you see any like a good change are uh, you uh, when say about we need to change? So do you think like after 21 months that five uh, state uh, like four now uh, have been done a good like uh, start of changing the okay. yeah very good good question. It's still too 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 early to tell you no know? because at this stage at this point now is people uh, you know it's anytime uh, change happens. One of the thing to do is to sloganize change, but at the same time also to the idea of transparency is very important. You know, for example, putting documents in the public for public, uh, you know, view or consumption is, is is very important. And any government that is not transparent will be having, you know, will be a secret government. Right? Uh, like I say, it's very too early to tell, but. And also at this point now, there's a lot of chaos still happening in Berak, the crisis and things like that. Yeah. Well, that's Thank a you. very important question. The biggest change, what, what the election of 08 done, is not whether the, the states have changed. It brought the reality that we can change the government. That's a major psychological change on the citizens of Malaysia. The fact that we can change the government. And the important fact that is an unknown, the fact that they can lose. That's a psychological feeling. When you think that you can lose, the world looks very differently to you. When Najib Brazza in the election in 1999 nearly lost, he became a better politician. Because the very fact that change is possible is a victory in itself. It doesn't matter what's done, but the fact that the, now people psychologically, yes, we can change the government because all of us vote that way. That's the most important concept to get to, whether the government is more efficient or not, but you put the fear of God on those. And that, I think that's, that's the most important change that people don't notice and we don't underestimate. You just, you're looking at change, change of government, change in leaders. No, the psychological change of the people that we, that, that we can say, now those guys know they can lose the job. You cannot be meant to be self forever. You can be changed by an election. And that's, that's the big, greatest victory for two And I'm not, I'm not a fan of Pakistan. I'm not a fan of I don't know anything like that. But I like the idea that people have been changed. When I was in Malaysia as a doctor, one thing that scares me a lot is that uh, people always face me. Because I'm a surgeon. Because nobody, people, in Malaysia, your underlings never criticize. Whereas in America, where every week we have conference, 
any, any I watch up a case, my colleagues will criticize me. We have a weekly conference. Com in Malaysia, we don't have that. I tried to introduce that. I found that the union that conference will never criticize me. It's enough. The very fact that we can criticize our leaders meaningfully, in other words, you can be changed. That's a, that's a very, very good change.